Welcome in, everybody, to the flagship podcast post game with Eric Henry and Chip Brown of Horns247.com, bringing you the uh, the thoughts from a 52 to nothing season opening wipeout of Colorado State. Eric, um, I don't know if Texas could have wished for much more. They come out of this game healthy. Uh, Jaden Blue left the game in the third quarter with cramps. He's fine. We talked to him just now. And the defense gets the shutout, the offense. Everybody got in. It seemed like everybody made a play. 11 different pass catchers in this game. Quinn Ewers throws for three touchdowns, which I think you and I said he would do. Um, in the uh, flagship podcast earlier in the week. I mean, was there anything really to get after in this one? Chip, in my mind, I don't think there was. I thought this was as flawless a performance as you could have expected. Steve Sarkeesian in his post game, noted that maybe would want to perform a little bit better against the run. But all things considered, especially when you were preparing for a team that's an air raid offense, the fact that they come in here at 25 carries for 106 yards with their leading rusher, but no real big plays. I mean, it's, it's what you would expect out of someone who carries the ball 25 times and, you know, you're going to get yards here or there. But this Longhorn defense neutralized Colorado State's weapon, their best weapons. And in my mind, a shutout, can't ask for more than that. Well, let's start with the defense because they get the shutout and it happens thanks to a freshman in Wardell Mack who preserves the shutout with a toe tap layout interception uh, in the final minute of this football game. Probably one of the best interceptions I've seen by a Longhorn in the last 10, 15 years. Um, that was spectacular. Obviously, there's a lot to talk about up until that point, but um, let's let's get into this defense, the pass defense, Eric, much maligned uh, last year because they were giving up 254 yards passing per game. That put them in the bottom third of FBS. Uh, but, man, this Colorado State offense, which is supposed to be so vaunted, uh, Braden Fowler, Nicolosi, wide receiver Torrey Horton, they didn't do anything. They only crossed midfield twice uh, to the Texas 49 in the first half, and then that drive that Wardell Mack uh, snuffed in the end zone, Eric. Yeah, Chip, you talk about that pass defense again. It was much maligned in the offseason, right? You know, whether it was the fact that this unit finished 12 out of 14 Big 12 teams last year or just the fact that teams, whether it was Houston or TCU, were able to throw their way back into games. For one reason or another, this pass defense was a concern. And we, talk, we heard from defensive coordinator Pete Kutowski. We heard from Steve Sarkeesian talking about an emphasis on improved tackling. Well, I'll say this, whether it was the coverage or the fact that one of the nation's top receivers, especially in yards after catch, and Torrey Horton only held to nine yards after catch, I believe it was only five receptions overall, under 50 yards. You can't ask for a much uh, much more of a performance than that out of your pass defense. And then especially, Chip, I'll pass it back to you on this, with a revamped unit that saw Jade Barron get the started outside corner. Yeah, that was uh... – if we, we've been writing about that leading up to the season that Jade Barrett was likely to be at corner because uh, Jalen Gilbo is back, Steve Sarkeesian said repeatedly, uh, back from his knee injury, and Jalen Gilbo leads the team in tackles with eight. Uh, David Benda, the linebacker, said he was surprised uh, to see that Gilbo was the leading tackler. He thought he was, um, but he talked about the competitiveness within – the defense, how they're all trying to, you know, do their best, compete with one another. And, you know, Michael Taft sniffs out a screen uh, on third down in, you know, Colorado State's first possession. Anthony Hill's everywhere. David Benda knifes through for a tackle for loss. I mean, I think in the first half, Colorado State, and this thing was over at halftime, but Colorado State was one of six on third down at halftime, finished five of 14. Um, but Vernon Broughton played, I think, the most snaps on the defensive line. The, the pass rush line was uh, Trey Moore and Colin Simmons at the edge position with 
Vernon Broughton and Baron Sorrell on the uh, the interior of the line. Eric, what do you think of the pass rush? Yeah, Chip, don't judge this pass rush in, in terms of sacks week one. Again, despite the fact that, yes, Colorado State did come out, Dowson ran the ball much more than Texas probably game plan for or anticipated. When Colorado State did throw, the, the game plan was to get the ball out of the hands quickly. Uh, Braden followed me close his hands quickly. So don't totally, you know, harp on the sacks, the sack number too much. Fowler Nicolosi was under duress. Uh, you know, that, that NASCAR package you talked about, right, with Colin Simmons, Baron Sorrell shifting inside, Trey Moore. I thought for what you could have expected out of today's ball game, it again, the only thing you could have asked for maybe was, you know, a, a stack here or there, or maybe some sort of play behind the line of scrimmage. But as far as harassing Fowler Nicolosi, I thought they did a great job. And also, Chip, to what you just said, this is just week one. Obviously, we have another 11 weeks left of the regular season. But I thought you really saw Steve Sarkeesian's call for death across the defensive line. You really saw that uh, showcase and exhibited in game one. Eric, one of the big question marks about this uh, football team coming into this season was their ability to finish red zone possessions with touchdowns. Last year, they only finished red zone trips with touchdowns 50.8% uh, percent of the time. It was one of the worst in FBS, 120th of 133. Today, Texas finishes 7 of 7 in the red zone, all touchdowns. And it was, again, a variety of ways. It was, you know, quick passes uh, to Matt Golden. Uh, he had a couple of touchdowns. Isaiah Bond had a seven-yard touchdown. Uh, Trey Wisner had a, a three-yard touchdown run. Um, Jared Gibson scored on a run. And then how about the dipsy do play by Arch Manning, who, what an entrance, right? He comes in, gets a huge ovation, throws a 40-yard strike to John Tate Cook. And then it's, you know, crunch time in the red zone. He's getting flushed, and he flips it to Silas Bolden uh, for a touchdown as well. This, this is what Texas needed, Eric, going up to Ann Arbor next week to take on a Michigan defense that still has a lot of studs returning. Yeah, Chip, you hit on all kind of briefs to it real quick. I mean, you'll see this up on the website. I just wrote about the real efficiency, the success rate of Texas's red zone. And one thing that stood out to me, I touched on this earlier in fall, Quinn Ewers is an option, and not necessarily a guy who's going to use his legs, not that Quinn can't scramble for a touchdown and make plays in the red zone, but the fact that they're trusting Quinn yours, put the ball in your best player's hands. We saw the touchdown pass to Matt Golden, the one-yard score, the touchdown pass to Isaiah Bond, the seven-yard score, another touchdown pass to Matt Golden, 11-yard score. So the fact that you have multitude of multitude of ways, uh, Chip, that Texas is operating in the red zone in addition to being able to find a, 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 a score like you got from Trey Wisner where you're running up the middle, you know, through in between the tackles, that just shows – a level of confidence in conjunction with execution for Texas's red zone. Well, Eric, uh, 52 to nothing shutout, the first shutout for Texas uh, since a 49 to nothing shutout over Oklahoma in 2022. That brings back a lot of good memories for Texas fans. Um, the pass defense was on point, Colorado State, their vaunted passing attack that finished ninth. Uh, in FBS last year, couldn't get in the end zone against Texas and um, the red zone efficiency. All these things are confidence builders for Texas heading in to Ann Arbor next week in a showdown that's going to grab all the headlines. Uh, will be a tone setter for the team that wins. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but your thoughts on Texas going up to Michigan after you see uh, what they were able to do in this 52 to nothing season opener against Colorado State. Chip, here's what stood out to me. In Steve Sarkeesian's postgame, he mentioned that the players, their attitude, it's already on to Michigan, right, in terms of their mental prep. Hey, we got to get rest. We got to rehab. We got a cold tub. We got to do all those things that you do to prepare. Chip, what that says to me in my mind, remember, well, yes, you did lose 11 draft picks from last year's team and you lost, you know, other guys as well. You still have a lot of players who remember what it took 
to go to Alabama last year and get a win coming off of a season opener. Those comments just tell me, tell me that mentally this group is ready. They've already turned the page. Yes, you want to enjoy the win, but this is expected. Chip, we said it a million times. If Texas is as good as we believe them to be, then this win shouldn't be, while it's one certainly in a country you want to celebrate, it's not something you should be over the moon about, right? It should be an expectation that this is the type of performance you put out. So the mental prep is there. They're already on to Michigan. That just tells me that this group knows what it takes to go into a hostile environment and come out with a road win. Yeah, they certainly were not looking ahead. That is for sure. Quinn Ewers saying he's excited for the opportunity to go up and face the defending national champions. Uh, Jaden Blue said, you know, we'll be ready. And Kelvin Banks, uh, fully aware that Michigan might have uh, the best defensive line in college football, anchored by uh, those two Haas defensive tackles, Mason Graham and Kenneth Grant. So, um, Eric, this, this was a, a win that checked the boxes for confidence heading into that game uh, in Ann Arbor. All right, well, that will wrap it up for uh, Eric Henry and myself of Horns247.com uh, from here at uh, DKR, celebrating the 100th uh, anniversary of Daryl K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium with a 52 to nothing win. That's a nice way to kick off that anniversary. And um, until next time, we'll see you over at Horns247.com where we have a 75% off annual promotion going on right now. And you want to be an annual member at Horns247.com so that you get all the, the VIP scoop from Eric, myself, um, the recruiting guys, Jordan Scruggs, Hank South, and you get all the VIP content on all the team sites in the preeminent 24 seven sports network. So you can check up on Michigan and all the opponents, Georgia, all the opponents that Texas will be facing in this absolutely seismic uh, first season in the SEC. So uh, until next time, everybody, oh, like and subscribe to the Horns 24 seven YouTube channel. Uh, Eric and I will be back soon. Until then, stay safe and keep the faith.